Yo, what's up, y'all? Welcome to another episode of the Two Man Game. Y'all know the drill. I'm Connor Cohn. This is Ryan over here. Ryan, how you doing? Pretty good, dude. Got to be up early, but I just finished watching the Jamal Cain Masterclass. Um, so that's yeah, the Masterclass you saw. Yeah, could be doing worse, man. I don't know why they're posting this uh, Wemben Wemben Yama dude Wemben Yami. Mm -hmm. I don't know why they yeah. keep posting this guy when Jamal Cain's going crazy, but you know. Yeah, so shout out to Jamal Cain, generation, the generational talent that everyone's talking about, Jamal Cain. Yeah, preseason is going on right now. We've had pretty much every team play at this point. Some teams aren't playing their stars. Like, they'll play like a quarter or two, but nothing too crazy. Before the podcast, we were talking. There isn't a lot to talk about with this preseason, maybe compared to some other years. But there still is a good bit to go over, so we figured we'd go ahead, make an overreacting to preseason video where we're going to talk about some of our thoughts from the preseason game so far, and also go through some of your hot takes. A few of y'all chimed in on Twitter. Uh, go follow me and Ryan on Twitter if you want to potentially be in one of these episodes or reply with one of your preseason hot takes uh, down below in the comments if you're here on YouTube, or I think there's like an ability to reply on Spotify as well. So let us know some of your hot takes too. We'd love to hear them. Also, if you're over here on YouTube, leave a like and subscribe. It helps the channel out a ton. Also, comment down below, uh, you know, again, your hot takes, what players impressed you the most, and also a prediction for this upcoming season. Our next episode probably is going to be like season-long predictions. We're going to talk about where each team's going to finish in the standings, awards, and stuff like that. So we want to hear y'all's takes, and we'll talk about yeah. some of your predictions out there too. Get us the 300 subs. We're like at like 280-something, I think, at the mm -hmm. time of recording this. So get us the 300 and then we'll yep. drop that preseason banger predictions video. Yeah, y'all also showed a ton of love on the Damon Drew Holiday episode. That was our most viewed episode yet, which really Good. appreciate that. Nearly a thousand views. That, that, this heart's going to be filled up if y'all keep that up. Yeah. <laughs> so leave those likes, subscribe, everything like that. Again, comment your predictions and you might be in next episode. But we've got preseason. Uh, first, though, unfortunately for Ryan Sixers, uh, it seems like James Harden and Daryl Morey are getting a divorce. Um, James Harden talked to the media today about how he still does not like Daryl Morey. He said it's like getting a divorce. He referenced that uh, directly. Ryan, any thoughts on that? Didn't he say he was going to play, though, that he was planning on playing yeah. for the Sixers? Yeah, and then a really interesting one, I'm assuming a lot of people that watch our podcast and listen to it also know of J.J. Reddick's because I don't know why they would watch ours and not watch his. Not, not nothing against us, but <laughs> <I watch laughs> J.J. Reddick's. J.J. Reddick's podcast is really good. The old, is it Old Man of the Three, I think? Uh, Yeah. Something yeah. like that. But they had an episode that came out today, actually, that I watched this morning featuring Tyrese Maxey. And JJ asked him, they're like, how has it been with James, like, at camp and stuff? And Maxey kind of laughed. He's like, to be honest, I was expecting way worse because he his only his exposure to this kind of situation was the Ben Simmons situation. Yeah. Where Ben didn't show up. Then when he did show up, he had the phone in his pocket ordeal happen. Or and he got, he got sent away. And then he didn't want to do drills. And there was the meme of him sitting there all pissed off. Mm -hmm. But he said, James has been really good. He said, I thought it was really funny. He's like, yeah, James is talking to guys like Ricky council. And if James really didn't want to be here, I don't think he'd be talking to Ricky council. <laughs> shout out, shout out Ricky council. For some reason that reminds me a little bit of the, the John wall. Like they had me playing with guys like Justin Patton the interview that he did that one time. But now Maxi was saying that Harden has been like pretty good with the team. And it seems like Harden's as long as, you know, he's there, he's going to participate and be a part of the team, but he's made it pretty clear that he wants to go. Mm -hmm. But also glad that Jared Moore is not really giving in. And, you know, because I feel like the Sixers are better with Harden, even if he's a little disgruntled than yeah. sending him away from Marcus Morris and scrap heaps. So yeah. Woj did come out with today that the Clippers are apparently trying to trade like their unprotected late picks to like lottery teams or not lottery teams, but like the teams that aren't that good. Like the thunder might be a team that could facilitate this. Honestly. I mean, yeah. we're, we're here for it we because could. the thunder have a ton of draft picks. And so I think the thunder would value a unprotected 2028 pick more than like two or three first that are from like competitive teams that they own. You know what I mean? I mean, we'll, we'll take as many, like we already own the Clippers whole future. I'll yeah. take as many Clippers picks as possible for me you know, personally like, I don't know, like a, a bucks and a nuggets pick for example and like this like those are gonna be late 30s you're like it's nice to have these two first round picks but like we already kind of have a roster crunch going on and you know maybe the sixers prefer to have two first instead of like this mm -hmm. one way down the line so we might do that kind of deal apparently that's what the clippers are trying to do but yeah. I, I think a tweet came out literally like right before we started recording this that there's still nothing imminent so yeah i don't, I don't know man I don't think it's going to happen, if you ask me. I think I it's think more likely that... I think it's the third season with him there. I think it's more likely that Brogdon ends up a Clipper, if you ask me. To me, that still feels like a realistic solution for them, where... 
They don't have to give up as much. He's not like a flight risk because Harden's on a one-year deal. And we've seen what it can happen with James Harden as well. Just requesting trades, trying to leave and everything. So I think Brogdon is a more realistic and maybe even better option for them just to put Brogdon over there. And I think he could play well off of Russ too. Like if they put them together in that backcourt, I don't know. And I don't, you then might have to give up like Terrence Mann, who they really don't want to give up in that deal. So to me, that makes more sense, but whatever deal that happens that doesn't help the Clippers remain super competitive beyond this year. Cause again, as a Thunder fan, we own like their whole future going forward. And I don't want to see teams fail, but if we can get higher draft picks, I'm going to take those. So we, I'm sorry, I'm sorry dude. Up. If, if you can get a championship level piece, Terrence man can go, I'll pack his bags. He can get the heck out of here, man. <laughs> it is unreal to me that they're treating him like he is some generational talent. Like, dude, well, we've yeah. seen stuff like this happen. We, I mean, we saw what happened with the heat potentially like dude, but, all right. Tyler Hero and Terrence man are not in the same tier though. Do you remember there? What was it? I think it was, um, do you remember when Lowry was like, they were trying to trade Lowry. I think it was y'all like y'all didn't want to give up maxi. Mm-hmm. Like that's a scenario where it's like, like with maxi, I, you know, I kind of see it, but I don't know. Man's like what? Like 26, I think. Like he's, he's, a, he's a really player, good role man, player. He's, not, he's never going to be anything more than like an above average starter. He's not going to be an all-star or any type yeah. of, I don't know. It's just with the Clippers, it's weird to me because this feels like it might be their last hurrah. Like PG and Kawhi are both going to be free agents. Cause I expect them to decline their player options going into next year. So they're both potentially free agents. They've got a new arena that's opening next year. So they're probably going to still try to field a competitive team. So maybe they work on extensions for those guys, but I don't know. We've seen this core try and try again over and over. They haven't gotten over that hump. They've been injured. They've just not pulled it off. And at this point, even when healthy, I don't think this team can really compete with like the nuggets out there or the Suns or maybe even like the Lakers like this. I don't know. It's just a lot of older role players that are kind of beyond their prime at this point. They might need a guy like Harden to energize them. So I don't know. The Clippers are in a really tough spot. Like this might be the last chance for them. So maybe you take that risk with Harden or maybe you still try to hold on to Terrence Mann in case things fall apart. You have a piece that you can use for the future. But again, he is like 26, 27 years old. I think he's 26. So I don't know. Just more James Harden stuff continuing to go on. I am impressed actually that he's playing. I thought he was going to sit out, but I think it's... I want to see him get a preseason game. I think it makes the most sense for Harden to play. Like if he sits out, I think that's really bad for him as he's well, going to. Well, especially because he's an uh, impending free agent. Like, wouldn't you yeah, want to playing at your value up if for some reason you have to stick with Philly next year and you're playing for your next contract? Yeah, I agree. I think it makes the most sense for both sides. It's going to, I think, entice Maury too, because I think if Harden just completely sat out, Maury would just keep him there. Like he wouldn't do anything. Like I don't, he's not going to move on, but if Harden Maybe is Ben Simmons 2.0. Yeah, if Harden's playing decently, but it's like I still want to trade and a package comes up, which a team could be more enticed to trade for him, he's actually playing, then I, I just think it makes the most sense for both sides. But I remember there being the rumors that he wouldn't play. So it's good to see that Harden's actually going to play basketball. But with that being said, I think that's the only news from outside the preseason at this point in the league. Uh, let's go ahead and talk about the preseason. So first thing I wanted to talk about, uh, we referenced him earlier. Victor Wembanyama has looked unbelievable in the preseason so far. He just played against the Heat. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and pull up his box score real quick. I believe it was 23 points, four rebounds, four assists, four blocks, like something completely absurd. And he was doing it by like Euro stepping from the outside the three. Yeah, every time he scored, it was like a highlight type of score, you know, like it's, it, it's kind of crazy unbelievable. Move. Like Euro step beyond the three point line, a give and go where he dunks from like nearly the free throw line, uh, a pull up jumper that looks Katie esque, like between the legs dribble as a seven, four dude out there. He had a dunk where it's like the Blake Griffin. Like you don't even like make contact with the rim. You just throw it in, except he was like almost outside the restricted area. It's, unreal and part of that was he played against the thunder um you know him and chet holmgren battling and he had a couple moves in that game too like he had one where he comes off um kind of like coming from the elbow and he drives and goes towards the rim and chet has this beautiful vertical contest like the best contest you could ever have and he goes up and under and is like levitating and he somehow flicks it in with his wrist he's an unreal combination Man, of like length. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> that was when he headbutt him. I uh, will agree with Chet. Vic did headbutt him, but still a strong move. Anyways, like Vic just does stuff that doesn't make sense to my mind. He had a steal on Jada where like one foot 
is beyond the three point line nearly. And one's like kind of in the paint and he just like scoops in and takes it away. And he can like run on the fast break. They've been using him a lot on the fast break. I've Popovich. noticed that he takes the ball up a lot. He does. And if someone gets a steal, Wemby is immediately leaking out because how do you stop that guy in the open court? Like he takes one Euro step. He's on the other side of the court, like past you. He hits two moves. You can't stop that. So mm -hmm. I like how they're using him like that. I think that's a good way to utilize Wemby. Like you said, he's handling the ball. He's doing give and goes. He's curling around screens. He was knocking down threes out there. Just unbelievable stuff. Like, he struggled a bit in summer league at times. We saw those flashes of greatness. It feels like now he's getting more comfortable. I know it's just preseason, but Wemby feels like he could be a first-year all-star with the way he's playing so far. It feels like in summer league, he was just kind of going through the motions. Like even mm. like watching him now versus, because I know you and I watched the summer league games together and it just was like, okay, like we see, we can kind of see, you know, what the hype was about. And now we're watching the preseason games. We're like, okay, like now we're talking about, we're like, okay, he's, he might be pretty solid his first year too. <laughs> Like Reggie Miller saying, this is the best prospect I've seen since LeBron. Like he, mm. like he was, and I'm, and he's, I mean, he's right. Like yeah. it felt like watching him out there. It feels like what people probably felt like watching LeBron in like that rookie year where it's like, this doesn't make sense. Wemby's just, I mean, I know the term generational is used a lot, but he feels like that kind of player. And right. ESPN put out their top 100 players list recently and i think they had him ranked like 38th or like 34th like going like they're projecting on what players are going to be next season i don't think that's too crazy that wemby could be that type of player like a top no. 35 30 player he's definitely gonna be a top season. 50 i think he'll be closer to 30 than 50 for sure like he's gonna have that type of impact defensively i mean the offensive flashes one of the worries with him coming into the league is like oh the three-point shots a bit hit or miss like sometimes the jumpers off i mean so far it's, he's looked great like he's like comfortable taking those shots whether he's in rhythm and you can't contest it like it does it doesn't matter who's trying to contest it he's just gonna shoot because he's a seven four dude rising up to shoot that thing like at the top of the apex you can't do anything about it like I, it's it's just absurd watching him play it was it's been really fun so far again like you were saying like you know, commentators, they're calling him like one of the greatest prospects of all time. Like it feels like watching LeBron. Obviously we didn't have that experience. I was three when LeBron entered the league. So this feels like kind of one of those experiences where you're watching someone who's about to take over the league. It was funny. I was watching this game with our dad and he's like a casual hoops guy. Like he knew, he knows some of the names. He mispronounces a lot of the names, but he yeah. like, he likes hoops and he knows a little bit of ball. And he doesn't know really much about Vic. So he's like, what can this, what is this guy good at? I'm like, and I just started naming like, and I just, I started naming things off. And I was like, I just named like everything you can do in basketball. <laughs> I was like, he's pretty good shooter, you know, good dribbling package. And I was like, good playmaker, good passer, good rebounder, you know, good at setting screens and making plays. And I, was, and I just kept good defense. I just kept going. I was like, wait a minute. I just named like every type of thing you can do in basketball. It, it really is, man. Like, I think really the only weakness might be like the outside shot might be a bit shaky even then the man you're seven four and you're still like I, would, I mean even if it's shaky he's at least gonna be an average shooter I feel all, like. all he's got to do is knock down like a little over 30 percent in his rookie season and that's terrifying because yeah. that feels like a number that could rise oh, closer absolutely. to 35 37 and even if the shots aren't going in it's not like it's ugly you know it's not like he's like putting up a michael kid gilchrist looking shot like, it looks you know good I mean? Like it's smooth, even if he's not making them. That's I think that's the thing that's really important mm -hmm. is that he's not like he, he's not putting up and like oh god every time he shoots. <laughs> yeah, he's taking them with confidence. It looks yeah. good. Wemby's been a monster so far, so that's been one of the highlights for preseason so far for me. But also Chet, Chet finally playing in like technically NBA basketball again. It's preseason, not regular season, but Chet's looked really good, and I've been waiting for this. Yesterday we saw the Thunder play with their projected starting lineup for the first time when it should have been last year but it is Shea, Dort, Giddy, Jalen Williams and Chet Holmgren out there and last game like the first game against Wemby Shea wasn't playing so we didn't get to see that out there Case and Wallace started instead which he's looked good so far but uh Chet either when he, whether he was going up against the Spurs where Zach Collins was guarding him for the most part like he was knocking down threes in transition he's attacking off the dribble defensively he looks great last night seeing that starting lineup of him shay giddy dort dub out there like i don't know if i've ever been that like i was cheesing so hard watching that like i could not stop like just laughing at some of the things that lineup was doing out there offensively defensively like they were so disruptive ryan and i were talking about this before the podcast 
The lineup feels small because Jalen Williams is like six six playing our power forward spot, but he's that height and he's got he's got like a seven two wingspan. Shea's six six as our what as our point guard. Like Dort's our smallest guy at six four. Giddy's like six nine, nearly six ten. So it's just a lot of length and like decent height out there. The defense looked good. The offense looked incredible at moments. It was just amazing. Like I, I couldn't believe I was finally getting to watch that group of guys out there. And it had me ready to run through a wall. There've been a lot of Thunder fans saying like, we're going to be a four seed or like a three seed this season. And I'm like, you know, trying to temper expectations a bit. And then I'm watching that game. I'm like, how One high seed. could we, how high <laughs> could we go? I'm like 83 wins with the in-season tournament. Like how high could we go with this team? But no, nah, man, I've been ecstatic. Like, it's one of the happiest times I've ever had as a Thunder fan watching that game. So I knew you were feeling it out because the whole world was watching either the Braves-Phillies playoff game mm. or Thursday Night Football, and that's what my whole timeline was. And then I have Connor's tweet notifications on. I just hear, Chet with another one. And meanwhile, <laughs> Nick Castellanos is setting the world on fire. And, like, there's, there's Taylor Swift's on the TV because the Chiefs are on. Mm-hmm. So it's just, like, I think it's really funny, like, you have all those other things going on, and then you got super fans like Connor. He's like, "Screw that, bro! Screw Taylor Swift! Screw uh, Nick Castellanos and Bryce Harper!" Chet Holmgren. Bro, I was watching. I didn't watch a minute of those things. I stayed all the way up until the end of the uh, the Pistons Thunder, seven p.m. on a Thursday preseason game. You I watch it every job, bro. If you're watching that, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Start <laughs> no, a family was... or something, bro. <laughs> Thunder basketball is my life. So. That's all I really need. But yeah, it was really fun. Uh, I uh, could ramble for Thunder. this whole podcast. I have, two, I have two questions just because I'm more of a Thunder casual than you are. Yeah. Uh, Poku's hurt, right? Because mm-hmm. uh, our father is a big Poku fan, and he was asking he me about Poku, and I wasn't able to really give him an answer because I wasn't yeah, sure. Yeah, Poku uh, hurt his ankle. I think he should be ready to go within the first like week or so of the season. Week what do you two. think his role is going to be, if at all? So last season, we used him a good bit. He played up some five for us. I don't think we'll see him in that role very much this year. I think he's more so like a four. Um, but he kind of just played as like an offensive connecting piece. I think he shot like 37% from three last season when he played. So he was knocking down shots. I think that's mostly what he's going to be. He was really good as like a weak side defender. So I think we could see some lineups of Chet out there like as the main anchor rim protector kind of guy poku over on the weak side rotating over that's a lot of length and shot blocking ability and then just being out there knocking down threes you know swinging the ball around he'll probably just be that kind of like connecting piece which i think is the perfect role for poku we don't need him to become like a star or anything just if he can be good in that role as like a solid defender uh block some shots you know, knock down some threes that's all we really need from him so that's what i'm I guess my only question is like him and ooze are a little re- redundant don't you think it is tough uh, because Ooze get, would look great. If y'all don't know, we're talking about Ooze Manjang. Uh, he looked really good in the game yesterday. He was amazing out I there. I like him. I think he's going to be good. I like him a lot too. Like he's he was confident. He was aggressive. Defensively, he's had some moments. His offense has looked really fluid so far in the preseason too. And he seems to have some chemistry with the other guys. So I don't know. That's one of the things with this team. I'm interested to see how we split up minutes because we've got so many guys. There's the starting five. There's like Casey Wallace off the bench, uh, Trey Mann as another guard who I don't know. Depot, bro. (laughs) Depot will not be on the roster by the time the season rolls around. Uh, Trey Mann didn't play very well last year, so it feels like he's kind of fallen out of the rotation. Um, Yeah, I was going to say, I wonder if he he gets booted. I think you'll get some minutes here and there, but it won't be anything too crazy. Um, we've got now Vasile Micic coming into town, former EuroLeague MVP. He looked good out there as well. I think he's going to be one of the like main he, – because he's like kind of forward hype but plays like a guard position. He's going to be like a, a two or a three, I think, coming off the bench, probably mostly facilitate when he's out there. So he'll be out there. There's Usman Jang. There's Jalen Williams, the bigger one who played starting center for us most of last season. He'll probably play some backup five. Kenrich Williams played backup five in our last game, like against the Pistons. Usman Jang played a little bit of that. So there's so many different players. And I didn't name a bunch of other guys too. Like there's so many players that are going to need some minutes here and there are probably going to be looking for them. That's one of the things I'm most interested to see with Mark Dagnall is how we run that rotation because there are so many young players that feel like they deserve minutes or should probably get some developmental minutes. But at the same time, like we're on a path where it feels like we could definitely be a playoff team this year. So I don't know. I don't know how you find that balance. That's going to be like the biggest thing I think for OKC this year is how we find that balance and what does it look like? So. And just to put a little spiel about my favorite team, Philly, I've really been enjoying uh, watching the vets play 
like the ones that we kind of picked up off the scrap heap per se, like Danny Green, like got, came in the other day and like started pouring it on. It's so weird to see Danny Green at Sixers uniform again. It was funny. Tyrese said his interview. He was like, it's like he literally never left, which I think was kind of funny. <laughs> and then uh, Kelly Oubre, the sexiest man alive, is you know <laughs> doing it on and off the court. Official nickname on and off the court. <laughs> But he, nah, was, man. he was hooping. He hit like what, like five of five threes one of those the games? Sixers or... have ne- this, he is the best bench score Joel Embiid has ever played with. <laughs> no, and it's not true? close. What about when like I, I was gonna say like Max he was coming off the bench this season and stuff, but uh, like that doesn't that that you're right, that doesn't really count. I think I, I think he's the best bench score the Sixers have had since we had Marco Bellinelli and Ursula Silva so, uh, <laughs> in that trade deadline. I don't think I think you're right. I'm trying to think of like if there's anybody like you're like you can about. say shake at times, but like he was so inconsistent. Yeah, I think Ubre has more volume potential. Oh, absolutely, so. especially from the wing. Especially from the wing, that's not debatable. Like, oh yeah, if, especially yeah, if you're talking especially like wing scores, not even close. Y'all have desperately been missing a player like that. Like I don't know, man. I'm, I really think if we can get the top end talent figured out, I really like the depth and like. I know Mo Bamba hasn't looked very good, but between him and Paul Reed, they'll figure it out. One of them will be at least serviceable. They only got to be good for like 10 minutes a game. So, yeah, I mean, MB is going to be playing 34 minutes a game or something like yeah. that. Like you don't need much from a Bamba out there or, I mean, Paul Reed could also just play back. Yeah, people have been freaking times. out about Mo Bamba on the timeline. I'm like, dude, he's going to play 10 minutes. He's just got to be okay. He doesn't have to be good. Yeah. Bom- he won't be super involved. Um, but yeah, I mean, is there anyone else who you've enjoyed so oh, far? That for sure. <laughs> Pat, I'm, we got we got yeah. Sixers trying to get some swagger back, and I like it. It feels weird that Pat Bev hasn't been a Sixer before now. It no, feels he like he should he ago. should have been a Sixer at some point. So it's gonna be hilarious when James Harden sits out, and then we have Pat Bev and Tyrese Maxey running the one and two. <laughs> so we'll, we'll see. I also think it's hilarious how. And Bean and Harden haven't played a preseason game yet, which kind of makes sense in a way. But neither is Furk on Korkmaz. So maybe him and Harden are holding out together. Yeah, because Korkmaz is one of those guys that requested a trade and we never heard anything about it. Which I, I think is funny because I guess there is something we could talk about that's like not really that important. But like Kai Jones, you know, requests the, the, publicly oh tweeting out saying, I want to be traded from the Hornets. And then that's the Hornets, never happened before, ever. <laughs> the Hornets wave the next day. That's never happened. The closest thing was Eric Bledsoe tweeting, I don't want to be here. And then trying to say, oh, I was at like a barber shop or something like that. Like no yeah, one has Kai ever Jones tweeted. I off of uh, – you and I, so yeah, I don't know. I don't know, man. It's that's such a weird situation. I don't know what's going on with him. I hope everything's okay. I will say the song he put out bumps a little bit. It's not maybe, good, maybe I would say, maybe, but it kind of goes. He was bumping his head to it, and then Kai Jones uh, quoted and said, "That's my boy." Yeah, I mean, they both went to Texas. Yeah, so. I was gonna say Texas boys. And there but, they go. <laughs> but I just think the horn. I swear, there needs to be a sign up somewhere. That says days since Charlotte Hornets have not had some BS going on because you had that happen and then Miles Bridges just turned himself in again. So, yeah, there's a lot going on with Charlotte. It's a weird situation. Lamelo looks there. good coming back off his injury, so that was at least Lamelo looks good. I mean, they've got they've got some talent over there. It's I don't know. I don't know if it's going to result actually in anything, but uh, we'll see. I mean, Ubre was saying like he's just glad to be somewhere that cares about basketball or like cares about winning, being over in Philly. Yeah, because I feel like the, 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 the Hornets are just the Hornets would make a really good Netflix series for a basketball team. I feel like it feel it feels like if if there's someone out there writing the script for the NBA, they're just writing the craziest storylines for the Hornets. They gave one guy just a pen, and they're like, just write some crazy stuff for what's going on with Charlotte. <laughs> we need them to be more relevant, but but not in a good basketball way. Just <laughs> yeah, outside of basketball. Hopefully, they can have basketball reasons for being relevant this season. But uh, speaking of Sixers. Ben Simmons looking kind of good. Ben Simmons has been solid. Yeah. If you if you take anything Ben Simmons does in a preseason game seriously, you are you are the most casual NBA fan of all time because you you there's a, there's a couple things that you know when basketball is coming back, right? Whoa, she starts tweeting a bunch of stuff. You know, summer league starting. Then you see videos of Ben Simmons shooting in the gym, and they're like, oh, he there's Ben Simmons shooting threes with the eyes emoji. Mm-hmm. It's like the same thing every single summer. Like that's how you know NBA is back. So. Like I mean, Ben Simmons made his one three against like the Guangdong Tigers, and everyone thought he was going to shoot, start shooting threes at one season in Philly. And then he didn't shoot one all season, so I don't want to hear him hitting fadeaways. I, and I, I'm just saying, taking steals against the freaking European team he played against the other day. I don't want to hear it. 
I'm just saying. Or at least he's there. He's on the court. Through the two preseason cool. games he's playing, and this version of Ben Simmons has looked much better than last year's Nets version. That's all I'm saying. Is oh. He looks he's still a put lot. the Mon Green stat lines, but he's definitely playing a little bit more <laughs> assertively. He's sure. looked aggressive. He's actually doing kind of Ben Simmons stuff where he's like running in transition, and he's looking to dunk, and he's finishing through contact. I'll give his stats against the Lakers in 14 minutes. Put up 10 points, one board, three assists on four of six shooting against um i can't remember what the team what the team was there was um, a Euro- some european team mrc is the abbreviation uh six points six boards nine dimes and a steal uh three of five shooting in 22 minutes he's look good is all i'm saying i'm happy to see ben simmons out there playing well and actually being healthy and playing the nets need him to be good this season if they want to get back to the playoffs they need a big season from ben simmons at least a bounce back of some sort whether that's defensively just becoming an all defensive type guy again offensively providing some type of you know playmaking table setting they need something from ben simmons and so far he's looked a lot better than he did last season Once like again, i don't think he i think put it's, up these it's gonna come down to how he how he fits with claxton man because they really like claxton i think he really had came on last season as like a really good center like on both sides of the ball. He should and, have been all defensive. Yeah. And every single time him and Ben were on the court at the same time, the Nets just got pulverized because offensively they just couldn't get any spacing and de- and they were just clogging the paint. So it's mm-hmm. just, it, we'll see how that goes. Cause it's really tough when you're trying to build around a young center like Claxton and Ben Simmons, you're paying a max contract to, and they, they need him to shoot. He's got to shoot. He's going to do it, Ryan. He's going to do it this year. I'm, I'm sure you. he will. And then he'll, he'll <laughs> actually make the year. He'll actually throw a fish in the water next time. We'll see. Yeah, he'll he'll make the fish in the ocean this time. Yeah, we'll see. Um, but yeah, shout to Ben Simmons. Been playing well so far. Uh, Celtics got the debut from Chris Ops Porzingis as well as Drew Holiday. Both have looked really good out there. Porzingis was balling in his first uh, preseason game. The Celtics are going to be incredible. I mean, I don't think we need to say too much about that. I, I will say – I do want to say ahead. before we move on from them is I want to see how they – I feel like it's been okay now since the minutes are limited and it's been really like kind of like sparse, but I do want to see how they do with all those mouths to feed because I feel like there are a lot of people that demand the ball over there. So I'm very curious to see how that goes. Yeah, it's going to have to be – I mean, I think when it's working towards the goal of winning, I think – unselfishness will prevail for that team. I, I expect because Ime Odoka or not Ime or Ime Odoka had like that more defensive minded scheme. Joe Mazzula was more of like an offensive coach and he had them, you know, moving the ball around, hitting a lot of threes. I'm hopeful that they'll kind of continue to build on that identity, which did falter at times last year. God, I think I have the hiccups at the worst time. Uh, but well, yeah, I, I'm just high in the Celtics team. I think they're going to be really good. Uh, the mm-hmm. question is, of course, stuff like the depth, which Peyton Pritchard has looked really good so far in, pre, uh, in a preseason. He got that. <laughs> Speaking of players who asked for trades, Peyton Pritchard like requested a trade at the end of last year, and instead they gave him like a forty million dollar deal this off season. Dude, so, you start requesting trades, you can either drop a SoundCloud mixtape, you can get a you bag. can work on Corkmaz and not play. There, there's a lot of outcomes for, for requesting a trade. You can get the whole country of Georgia to try to beat you up. I remember that happened with FERC and <laughs> some international play last year. Oh, trade requests, man. I can't believe Kai Jones just straight up tweeted that out. That's ridiculous. Um, Richard, look good. They need players to step up like him. He's been good so far. Delano Banton had some big moments too. Last preseason game for them. Maybe he's a player. I don't know. Just nice to see a couple guys stepping out in moments. Um, but yeah, I think that's all I have for the Celtics. We're not going to talk about every team, by the way, just some of the more notable ones that uh, we've had time to watch and you know evaluate. The Rockets are another one of those teams that have looked good so far. Dylan Brooks got ejected five minutes, in, I don't even think five minutes, into his punched first preseason in the nuts, game. By, man, that's crazy. He punched Daniel Tice in the spot you don't want to be punched. Out of all the people, Daniel Tice is a dude to get hit in the nuts. I'm not going to lie. I he is. Why. Daniel Tice feels like a gets hit in the nuts a lot kind of our guy. But our buddy Nick said that the whole world's against Tice. And we used to have this thing in the group, in our group chat because it felt like Tice would always get like a lot of bad calls against him and a lot of stuff not go his way. And he would always go, the war on Tice is continuing. So Dylan Brooks hmm. is re, 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 He's reigniting it. it. He's joining the war on Tice on the team of anti-Tice. Uh, punched him. It didn't look super intentional. I could see it being intentional, but I, I don't know. Trolling. 
it might have just been like kind of it might have been he meant to like tap him or like bump into him on the screen to kind of just like be physical but he ends up hitting him there so I don't know. He also got like a fine for it, which I felt like was excessive. But yeah, Dylan agree. Brooks has looked good defensively. He, I think he's only shot twice so far when he's played from the preseason, which Dang, is... Dang, man. They told him no trigger. No, no trigger. <laughs> you, can't, you can't unload that. No. Yeah, he can't, be, he can't be trigger happy out there. No. So it's good that he's not shooting a lot. That's what they're going to need. They need Dylan Brooks to chill out. Maybe he's learned from his time with Memphis. I will say from watching Team Canada, he still likes to shoot the ball a lot. He still got the extended clip occasionally. <laughs> yeah, at times. He, he will unload, but we'll see if that's a problem for them throughout the season. Uh, Jalen Green's look good alongside Fred Van Vliet. Jabari Smith Jr. has been really good continuing from Summer League. He might be the player that takes the big jump Maybe for them this season. Maybe going off too. Yeah, Shangun had some good moments. He looked good defensively last game. A lot of people are getting hyped about this Rockets team. I've seen some people saying they could sneak into the play in which, if you ask me, I think it's a little too early just because the West is so stacked. Yeah, there's too many other good teams. It's not like their roster is bad. It's just there's too many other teams that are better, I think. Yeah, I think they're going to be way better. Like already from that preseason game, that preseason game was more fun to watch than any Rockets game from last year at all. It's not even close. Like there is a noticeable difference with the Rockets in terms of their cohesion, in terms of just they're actually like running an offense, it feels like, which is a big plus. I'm happy for Rockets fans. I'm happy that they're going to be more watchable this season. And I do think they'll be a lot more competitive. I just think it might be a year early to put them in the plane because you do have 11 like good teams out there in the Western Conference. You've also got like the Jazz who are going to be fighting for that spot. I think the Spurs with Wemby could be interesting too. I mean, even the Blazers with Scoot, who's looked really good too. We'll talk about him in a moment. Uh, Simon, Sharp, Aiton, Robert Williams, Malcolm Brogdon. Jeremy like Grant. Jeremy Grant, the $160 million man. Like The West has really no bad team. I feel like when I take a look, there are going to be teams that are worse than other ones, but I don't think there's any outright bad teams. I would say at least right now, the so. Blazers might have like the most mid roster of all time, but I feel like it's sneaky, kind of not that bad. It's not it. I think a lot of it will depend on how the guys look now that Dame is gone. Like the Simons take a bit of a jump. Do we see sharp take that second year jump? What does scoot look like as a rookie? But yeah, I mean, I think they're going to be competitive. I don't think they're going to make the plan. They probably, they might even be like the 15th, 15th seed in the west but i don't think they're going to be bad they're not it's the not thing. a bad roster i mean it's not good but it's not like i don't know like ayton's a like a top 10 ish center depending on who you ask mm -hmm. jeremy grant is like you know one of those like tier below and all-star types of players i mean simons can put up 20 something a night especially when he has you know the green light um scoot henderson's supposed to be you know the next timothy so we'll see i mean Jaden Shaden sharp looked insane once you know dane started sitting at the end of last year and he got a he lot of really good volume. he looked really good so yeah, yeah i don't know man it's not, it's, it's like i think of like really bad teams from like years past and like that roster is just like head and shoulders above like it just feels like even like the worst teams nowadays their rosters are so much better than like I think back to like the process Sixers or like the year the Warriors were really bad when Steph got hurt. Just like yeah. like these rosters are like these really awful teams. The Warriors out there starting like it's like a starting lineup of like Jordan Poole when he was really bad at that. It was point. like Kai Bowman, Jordan Poole, Alec Burks, Glenn Robinson. Their and... best player was like Eric Pascal out there. Yeah, at Eric times. Pascal, that was like their starting five. And now like I don't even know if he's signed on a team right now. It's it does feel like the league is more talented than ever. I wonder what the why that is where it doesn't feel like like across the league what team is straight up bad at this point? I don't think there's anybody like the wizards might be kind of rough because they have a lot of young players. Even then you still have like Poole and Kuzma who are two borderline all-star types of talents. So, I mean, I don't know. Yeah. I think it's, yeah, it'll be interesting to see what they do. I mean, they also look good in their first run together. They were fun. Uh, Bilal Kulabale, their first round pick, top 10 pick, has looked really good, especially defensively. He had like a crazy two-handed block out there. Oh, also, while we were talking about the Hornets earlier, Brady Miller had that crazy poster on Gafford that ended up being called a, <laughs> That was insane, bro. It ended up being called a charge, which I'm super disappointed about because Gafford laid out like, like he had died. He was just dead on the ground, which, man. I really wish that was poster. one during a regular season game because I feel like more people would have cared. I feel like really not that many people were talking about it. Not enough because I – I get it got called back. I'm a believer that if something's cool, let it go. I don't care what the rules are. Let a cool I'm thing happen. Man. Daniel Gaffer even gave him the thumbs up. He was like, yeah, you don't need to call that. We good. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think that's most of everything we wanted to talk about. Uh, the Heat have had some – we talked about Jamal Kane earlier. He was good tonight. We've had We've seen the Heat have some 
very scary random role player performances so far throughout the preseason that I feel like the Heat always find guys that have not stuck well, anywhere I can't else. Wait till the Heat are in the Eastern Conference Finals this year. They have Cole Swider and Jamal Cain starting alongside Jimmy, uh, Bam, and Hero. Yeah, so they beat like the Celtics and Bucks in five games each because Swider's putting up like 30 points per game. Cole Swider is one of those guys. Jaime Hawkes looked good in his first preseason game. Like, it feels like they're going to find random talents again that are somehow going to do this. They're just going to be really good players. Eric Spolstra is a wizard. I don't know they, how he does it. They just but spawn them in a lab, dude. They do. It, I, I swear they get to Miami and there's just like something in the water there that just makes them just good basketball players. It doesn't matter. You could take a player that has been out of the league for like five years, has never uh, stuck in a spot. Like Dwayne Dedman. <laughs> Dwayne Dedman's old though. That's different. That's different. And he's a Sixer legend. Don't talk about Dwayne Dedman like that. I don't know. Uh, but okay, I think that's all we've got for our preseason takes. We, we, like I mentioned earlier, we took to Twitter, asked for some of y'all's hot takes for the preseason. Um, yeah, we've got a few of them we'll talk about. We've talked about kind of most of these, so we won't take too Very long. Very disappointed, this. though, in the turnout. I know Connor posted it when nobody was caring about basketball, but still, y'all need to be better. <laughs> it's my fault. I tweeted it right during, like, I think. The second I tweeted it, it was like Castellanos hit one of those big home runs. And yeah. like it was in the midst of the Chiefs playing. It was Travis not- Kelsey just had like the catch of the year. And Taylor Swift and um, Mahomes' wife were just sitting there like jumping, hugging each other. Yeah, I, I didn't tweet at the best time. But uh, we appreciate those of y'all that did reply. Uh, first one comes from Lint, who is a watcher of both my channel and the um the podcast shout out to them said that benjamin simmons is better than ever as their overreaction brian will brian will give you a take on that i'll let him he's not better than ever but he definitely looks better than the nets and i just i think him just being on the court is a big win for them you know what i mean yeah like i said it's gonna we're gonna see how he fits with their lineup because like i said it was the issue was when he put they put him with their other core guys it just wasn't working so they moved him to the bench and then he eventually just fell out and you can blame the back, but I mean, it just wasn't working last year. So we'll see. He says he's healthy. He says that he's good. So we'll see how he meshes with the guys. And I'm rooting for him to not like, I don't want him to suck. Like, I know a lot of Philly fans are rooting on his downfall, but like, I don't know. At this point, man, it's, it's been so long that if he tries to talk any crap towards Philly fans, it's just like, I, I don't think he will. I think he was interviewed mm-hmm. recently saying that he would go back to Philly if they want him back at ever some point in the future or something. There's some kind of. Wouldn't that be a really fun homecoming if later down the line Ben Simmons rejoins Philly? Wouldn't that be fun? I mean, that's the that's the misconception. Like people say that we were so mean to Ben Simmons, but there is no fan base that got more made fun of than Philly fans for defending him for so long. All the all of us saying he's better than Tatum. Don't even put him and Tatum in the same sentence. And Tatum's out here putting up thirty plus a game, and Ben's not even playing for a rebuilding Nets team. It's just like oh, like we. There was the know. fan that was like trying to show him how to shoot free throws in the in the crowd. <laughs> yeah, that one yeah, this guy. Game. Yeah. So shout funny, out to Ben man. Simmons, man. Hope hopefully he has that season that is a lot better than last year. Um, yeah. we've got Chase saying that the Orlando Magic are a playoff lock as their as their Ooh. overreaction. Shout out to I Chase. think they're a lock to not be the worst team in the East, but um, I just feel like they have a lot of good players. I just feel like they're upper echelon of talent isn't up there with the other teams like i think palo's really good franz is good um they have like a lot of good young players jonathan isaac i don't we'll see what he does he doesn't even feel like a real basketball player at this point he just feels like an npc that's kind of there but um they have a lot of good players just like i said i just don't think their upper echelon of talent is going to put them above the rest of the league like they're going to be better than maybe like the wizards the pistons I think they could get there. Uh, it's it's going to depend what kind of jump Paolo takes. Like if Paolo takes that jump to be a bona fide all star, like or if Snugs or Fultz, you know, take a jump. Yeah, or... it's the guard rotation. I think is the big swing factor for them because they've got a lot of young guards that have a lot of potential. But we need to see it a little bit more legitimized. Also, they sh- were terrible last season shooting the three. I don't know what that's going to look like this season. I think they got better. They added Joe Ingles to this team. Uh, Gary Harris is a shooter. Paolo, I think, will be better as a shooter. Like, they've got some guys who can shoot. Yeah, we'll see what Caleb Houston can do. Jet Howard is an offensive player. So, 
they address he's an it offensive bit. player. It's like you yeah. said that, like, like he can play offense, not like, or, or he's offensive. Like, he, he, can, <laughs> he can shoot. I was just saying he's more than just a shooter. Oh, he's, he's the most a... offensive player on that team. Man. Okay. Cool. Shout out Jed Howard. But I think this Magic team could make the playoffs. I wouldn't be surprised if they did. I think I have them more pegged as a play-in team. I think they could make the play-in. But it is kind of tough. Like you talk about some of the other teams, like the Bulls have DeRozan and Levine. You've got the Raptors. You have Pascal Siakam, OJ Anobi over there. Scottie you Barnes. have, you know, we'll see what Scotty Barnes does. We have what other, I'm forgetting all the other Eastern Conference like, teams. Like the, like the Hawks were on the fringe last year. They still have DeJounte and Trey Young. And a lot of people think the Hawks are going to be better. I think they probably will be. I think they'll be exactly um, the same. The Pacers. Like, I'm a believer in the Pacers too. Oh yeah, the Pacers, the Pacers, yeah, Pacers yeah, could be really like good. We we are so, both Pacers believers. We are. It's it's going to be tough for them to make the playoffs because they are such a young team and they haven't taken like that first step yet. Last season, the second half, they were a lot better, especially defensively. Mm-hmm. It's just a matter if they can get that offense going. Which. Yeah, if they make the playoffs, I wouldn't be surprised if they make it. I'm not. They're certainly not a lock in my eyes. But I wouldn't be surprised if, like I said, this kind of goes back to the fact what I was saying earlier. It's not that the magic are bad; it's just that everybody else is better. It's it. It really does feel like the league is incredibly stacked right now. Like there's just so much talent. Mm. We have uh, Danny who says that Jaden Springer will be all defense in two seasons max. Dude, Jaden Springer looks. The thing is, I, I feel like we finally are gonna have a coach that'll actually play him. Dude's a dog, man. Like. We just been letting him wreak yeah. havoc in the G League for so long. It's just like time for finally unleash him. And we drafted him as a project piece, and I really think he could be a pretty solid role player with us. I like him. I'm I'm hopeful that he finally gets run. I've been wanting to see Jane Spur play basketball for a while. Doc Rivers refused. Doc Rivers is a war criminal for <laughs> the, what he did to him, banishing him to the G League, and then. Like there was a night where I think the Sixers were missing three point guards, and everyone's like, "Oh, this is a night that Jaden Springer starts and gets some run." And I think he started Cork Maza point guard. <laughs> he was so mad. Doc Rivers hates Jaden Springer. He does, man. He, he hates Harden. He hates Springer. Yeah, yeah. He had to go to free Jaden Springer. That's we're hoping Nick Nurse will do that. Also, but can we talk about that ESPN broadcast team? That is so awful compared to what they used to have. That is no, the. The Breen Doc Rivers Doris Burke one. That is gonna be oh my gosh. Like Mike, so, Bre- Mike Breen is so good, but Mark Jackson if, you can call even if you think they're bad announcers, which objectively they probably are, it was still the, so the chemistry the good. chemistry was great between yeah. the three of them. The chemistry was really good. I'm gonna miss it. I'm gonna miss those three because like I started really like falling in love with basketball like early 2010s, and they were of course calling all the finals and like the biggest games they're kind of the people that like I've watched for the longest. So it's, it's going to be weird to watch those three broadcasts. Also doc rivers used to broadcast and was pretty good, but now his voice has been like, yeah, it's going to be halftime of a game and Mike Breen's going to be like, what do you think of that dog's like, ah, 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 ah. <laughs> <laughs> like it's just not, he's not going to have his voice. It's uh, so unreal. raspy. And it's like, I remember there'd be like pregame, not pregame, um, like during game timeouts and stuff, and you know how they do like the, the they mic them up and they have them. Yeah, yeah. I swear, Doc wasn't even able, able to get through the speech half the time just because he would always lose his voice. Yeah, hopefully Doc is still able to showcase some of the magic he used to. We'll we'll have to see how it looks. I'm already preemptively missing that trio because they were really fun. Again, like Ryan said, they had their moments where it's like, "What are you talking about? Like, what are you doing?" But the chemistry was really fun. I love the memes guys. where it's like Mike Breen talks about basketball, Jeff Van Gundy. So what about the Barbie movie, man? Like that was just a really good, that was just really good cinema. And Mark Jackson's like, that's really weird. They put it on the same weekend as Oppenheimer. Like you would think they'd want to spread them out. And Mike Breen and Jimmy Butler with the two. <laughs> like Just like that's like their conversation. Yeah. They're like, then a, a quick mama, that. there goes that man thrown in there. Yeah. yeah. And, Je- and, Je- and Jeff Van Gundy bringing up I'll a rule. He's like, back when I was coaching and we were able to <laughs> Jeff and Gun, he would bring up like the craziest rule changes. He should be like, I believe you should be able to suplex the other team's best player once per game. And it's like, what are you talking about? You should be able to phone a friend and fly in any NBA player from any arena and have them come in for five minutes. There is that one clip where he just goes, What is a second cousin? What can you do with them? <laughs> and it's like those moments. I'm going to miss those moments so much. It was so fun. If watching so, somebody them. needs to make a thread of the best Jeff Van Gundy. I'm, maybe I'll do this. If I get so bored tomorrow or sometime this weekend. Just I'm go through and find the best Jeff Van Gundy moments. Yeah. I think it'd be good. <laughs> oh, man. That if you, that if you know a Jeff Van Gundy moment off the top of your head, comment below to help my research. <laughs> I'll out with his research project. 
-hmm. But yeah, we can move on now. We've got a uh, take from Moon who says that Bilal Koulibaly will be seen as an absolute steal in the draft a few years from now. I think he certainly could. I, he was taken eighth, seventh. There was that trade between the Pacers and yeah, the Wizards. Like, he was like uh, a high pick, but he's raw. Like I think he's one of those guys where he could either be out of the league in like five years or he could be like an all-star. I think yeah. each are both just likely because he's very raw. I'm a I'm a believer in him, but yeah, we'll have to see. It's tough to be a big steal when you're taken in the top ten. Yeah, exactly. Like That's the thing. He's gonna like if he's if he turns out to be like an average player, is he really a steal? Like you know what mm -hmm. I mean? He's gonna have to like even if he becomes like an all star. Like I mean, there's so many talented players taken over him. Like you had Wemby and Scoot and Brandon Miller. Or like well, it's more important who was picked after him. Man. I think that's more important than who was picked before him. Taken after him, right after him, you had like Taylor Hendricks, Casey Wallace was taken there, Derek Lively was taken there. So, Not like you, you, hard, though, but I mean, yeah. the talent drop off was definitely there. So I could see the Wizards making a reach there because I think a lot of people thought that Bilal was picked pretty high there. I was surprised because he was someone that was mocked to the Thunder a lot at 12. Like he felt like the most likely pick for mm -hmm. us. And then he ends up getting taken a little bit early, but he rose up draft boards quick. And he, I mean, he's shown that the defense, especially I think from day one, he's going to be impactful. Yeah. It's just a matter of if that offense can come around, which it's looked solid so far. Mm -hmm. So we'll see. Uh, we've got Leak, who says that Chet will be a Depoy candidate as a rookie. I think he could finish top 10 in Depoy voting. I think he could be all defensive potentially. Yeah, I think it's more likely he gets like second team votes and maybe sneaks in there, depending on yeah. you know, who's there. But I don't know if he's going to be a serious Depoy just because there's so many players. But thinking about our team, like last season, we were borderline top 10 defense without a center really out there. So Chet coming in there as a great defender, if we're, I could see us being a top five, firmly top 10 defense. And in that case, like I think Chet could get some of that I mean, hype. But it's we do have a lot of good defenders. A rookie here. doing it because, you know, Walker Kessler was right there last year. For the yeah, Walker team. Kessler was, like, really good in that regard. But even, like, with him, like, did he make all defense? I don't think so. I don't remember. Here, I, I don't believe – no, I don't believe he made all defense. There's no way. Yeah, he didn't make it. So it, it's hard. And, like, Kessler was amazing. It was – the Jazz weren't the best defensive team, so that could be the difference between him and Chet is, like, I think the Thunder could be a good defense next season, like a really good defense – so that could certainly change things, but it's it's difficult as a rookie to get those honors because all defense particularly, I feel like it takes a year. Like you have to establish your reputation almost. Like I think Claxon is going to be a lot more considered for defensive awards this year because last year everyone's like, oh, this guy's amazing. He didn't get that recognition, and now I think he could. Same thing with like a Jay McDaniels. Defense – it feels like it takes a year or two for people to catch up on who's really good. So Walker Walker Kessler has the 14th best odds on DraftKings to win Depoy. To win Depoy, yeah, I mean he's he's up there. It's also it's hard as like, like like Chet's going to be a center too, and you've got like Anthony Davis, Brooke Lopez, uh, Joel Embiid as like defensive guys. Triple like J. Triple J is he's a front court guy, so that's another player that could take those away. Bam at a bio. I didn't even say Bam, Rob Williams, somehow. man. Off Robert the bench. Williams. We'll see what he can do over there. Like, there's just there's so many defensive, of course, because center is that position. I mean, even Vic. I think Vic could also be in that conversation. Too. Yeah, especially you get the counting stats. Yeah, like he's gonna put up blocks and seals. Vic feels like a guy that he could get a five by five this season, and I wouldn't even be surprised with Vic. So nope. Uh, we've got Cavs season who says that Amani Bates is the future goat. Thoughts? He looked pretty good his first preseason game. He has looked good. Uh, he looked good in summer league too. He was pretty good out there. So he's I'm, in the Cavs, I'm, right? Yeah, they took I think him that, with see, like now the, that I think is going to be a steal draft pick. Yeah, I think that's more so like if Amani Bates becomes good, I think that's not even good, bro. If he's good serviceable, man. I mean, you got him. This, they got him in the second round, right? I think mid forties. Like, like yeah, forty. If you get anyone in the mid forties and they become a rotational piece, like that is a dub. Forty nine. Okay, late forties. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, he had all the hype going into like uh, college and stuff. He was like one of the top recruits out of high school, and he ends up not being very good in college. He was young. Now ends up falling in the draft, and he gets picked by the Cavs, which I think is a good position for him to be in. You Absolutely. don't on a good team with a lot of like veteran leaders. Yeah, you don't want him to go to a team where. He's try they they're like okay go out well, like, there and produce. It's like right Houston away. or Detroit would have been the worst case scenario. Yeah, these are the Cavs are already a team that's trying to get to championship contention. They're a really good playoff team. I like that spot a lot for Amani Bates. So future goat, who knows? But becoming a good player, I think that's definitely not out of the question. Um, and then the last one is uh, Chet's floor is Victor ceiling, which insane take there. I am Team Chet, of course, in this battle, but that's know. still that's insane take. 
I do think they both have very high. I do honestly. Who has the higher floor, Chet or Vic? That's a good question. I don't know. I think, higher, it's, I, I think it's tough. I don't think you can argue with me saying that Vic had probably has a higher ceiling. Vic for sure has the higher ceiling. I'm not going to argue with you. Though. Yeah. Yeah. Check. Like I, if Chet becomes the best player in the league, I would be surprised. I think Chet could be one of the better players. Vic could be the best player in the league next year. Vic, Vic, I don't know about next year. Vic could within like four or five seasons. I think Vic could for sure be in that conversation. Chet. I think he could be like top 10 someday, like top 15, but I would be surprised if I saw Chet as like the best player in the league. I just don't see it happening. So yeah. makes it hard. In terms of floor, even might be it, it's tough with the two. It's tough with the two of them because do you take into account like injury proneness potentially with those two guys as well in terms of like yeah, having that's a what floor. I was thinking too. So maybe it's Chet. He already had like the season long injury, but with the way that Vic is like a little bit bigger and a little bit lengthier, maybe he's a little bit lower in terms of floor because I could see him having more injury problems potentially because he's asked to do more. I don't know. It's it's tough. I think it's pretty close. But yeah, if you ask me, even as a biased Thunder fan, Vic has the higher ceiling. Like I'm mm-hmm. not going to deny that. For sure. But OK, that's all we've got for that. One thing we're going to wrap up with now is Reggie Miller on TNT made tier lists of each of the conferences. I wanted to run through them real quick um, so we could talk about them for a moment. So you able to pull it up, uh, pull it up on here. Yeah. Um, yeah. Let me, let me go back and find that tweet. I think it was from NBA world. Shout out to them. Um, they posted. Oh, did you just have the graphic memorized? No, I put it in the podcast doc, but I think it might be easier if I just zoom in on this and oh, yeah, on the fly. That. Yeah, I put it in there. I was just going to read them off, but yeah, you're right. I can probably do a share screen like this. Okay. And then do there this you on go. the fly. Didn't we have a better setup last time? Yeah, you put us. Oh, That's you had us like on the bottom, I thought. This. Yeah, we like this, this one, one. This one I think is a little bit better. Yeah. Um, okay, hold on, wait. Let's oh, that's the wrong one. I'm doing this on the well, fly. I'm tiny. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna zoom in on that it a good. little. I'm gonna zoom on a little bit more. Oh, because now when I click on the picture, no, that's good. Okay, that's good. Okay, there we go. So this is Reggie Miller. He made a tier list of each of the conferences. This is the Western Conference in his top tier. He has the Nuggets, the Suns, the Kings, and the Thunder as no, his top a, that's teams. Like his second tier are the Pelicans, the Grizzlies, the Clippers, the Lakers, and the Warriors. And who to watch? I don't know what that means necessarily. The Mavericks and the Rockets. A notable team missing from this entirely are the Minnesota Timberwolves. Are not there at all in this ranking. Um, I think they're like the main team that's missing. Like the Jazz aren't there. How, how many teams? Spurs aren't like we have one, two, three, four, five, six, Portland's seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Yeah, it's just like the, the Timberwolves are the main team. I think that is isn't Portland, there. Jazz, Spurs, and Timberwolves. Yeah. So what do you think? I would have um Kings and Thunder both on the tier two. And I would probably put Lakers, uh, maybe Clippers, maybe War. One of those teams I think would be more of a just because they have the experience. Yeah, I would run out that one. Tier. I don't. I don't think we're. I don't think we belong in first tier quite yet. Again, I'm a biased Thunder fan. I don't think we're quite there at the moment. So it's that's what a lot of people are talking about. Is that Thunder spot there? We've been getting a lot of hype. I think it was Bill Simmons who said he has us as a top four team in the West. Woj was talking about how they're setting y'all up to be overrated. <laughs> they're setting us up. If we do anything less than like a major leap, they're setting us up for slander, which I don't appreciate. I do think we could be really good this season. Again, I'm getting hype. I'm I believe we're going to be a playoff team, but yeah, the hype is definitely building for this squad. I'm shocked to see the Lakers in tier two. I think the Lakers are pretty firmly in tier one with like the Nuggets and the, I think the Nuggets, Suns, and Lakers are like my top three teams right now. I think they are like the tier one teams at the moment. You could maybe throw like a Warriors in there just out of respect for what they've done in the past. I think I moved um, the Mavericks to t- the two. And then, yeah, Mavericks should not be like the Mavs being in the put, same like, tier. Wolves and who to watch versus. But I think the Timberwolves should also be tier two. I think there's like Maybe. tier one, and then all these teams in tier two, and then there's like the teams that I think there should be like four or th- three or four teams in tier one, and like seven in tier two. Yeah, I know like you were just talking about how the West is really hard to predict, and that's because a lot of teams feel so like they're hard. all in that second tier. Exactly. So. 
Yeah, I think I'd move the Kings down. I'd move us down. I'd put the Lakers up there, maybe like the Warriors or the Grizzlies, something like that. Pelicans, if they're healthy, but I don't know if they're ever going to be. So something like that. But okay, that's the West. Here's the East. Top tier, there are the Celtics, the Bucks, the Cavs, and the Sixers. Second tier are the Heat and the Knicks. And who to watch are the Magic, the Raptors, <laughs> the Nets, the There's a very Hornets, notable uh, omission from this list. Who do, you, who do you notice that's missing, Ryan? Atlanta. Atlanta is not there. Dang, that is, that's bad. Hornets on here, not Atlanta. That's pretty bad. I'm not going to lie. That is bad. Um, yeah, so we have four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven 11 teams. It seems like he was limiting it to 11 teams. Uh, Pistons are not on there. Wizards are not on there. Chicago Bulls are not on there. The Pistons, Wizards, Chicago Bulls, and Hawks. Those are the four teams that are not so, on this In my opinion, list. the East should have a zero tier for the Celtics and the Bucks. And then, and then it should be like a first tier, which is like Sixers, Cavs, Heat, Knicks. Yeah. And then you know, I think I put I think I put Sixers because like if James Harden's playing, I think the Sixers are like up there. I think it's Celtics, Bucks, and then like yeah, Sixers, Heat, Knicks probably. And then behind those teams, I think it's kind of ever like pretty open for like you could have like a third tier i think the hawks are closer to second tier than who to watch (laughs) like that's pretty bad or i think they're closer to second tier than not even being listed on this like that's crazy again i missed this part of the broadcast so i don't know what the context was like i don't know exactly what who to watch means or if he talked about the teams that weren't there but yeah this these are just reggie miller's list i just thought it was interesting while we're heading in towards like season predictions and stuff so Reggie Miller being controversial. What's new? Uh, But yeah, I think that's all we've got for today's episode. Again, next episode is going to be a um, Ryan got blurred right here at the end. I was going to say, it looks like I always fade out as the episode's ending. You do. It's it's very well timed by your webcam. But next episode, we are going to be doing NBA season predictions. Ryan are going to come with our awards. We're going to come with our standings, um, other things. We're going to come with our conference, like, well, I say we just we don't have to predict the entire playoffs or anything like that. I say we just come with uh, who are every game score, uh, score, the weather, stat the game, lines, weather outside, how many fans attend it, yeah, total attendance, money made by the arena, mid halftime entertainment. We're gonna predict everything, predicting the entire NBA. I think we season. should we should do like a basic predictions, and at the end, too, we should each pick like 10 over unders for the other person to guess, like, and they could be random too. Like, I'll do like over under. Chet's season high is 25 or something, you know, like stuff like that. Okay. You know, that'd be fun. I like that. We each could put, pick like, cause we'll, cause you know, everyone's going to predict, you know, standings, MVP awards, all this stuff. And then we could throw, we could throw in some like surprise stuff that we kind of have to predict. Maybe come up live. with like some superlative awards too, like not just like the typical ones. We could do like most disappointing team, most surprising team. Yeah. Um, and then like, it'd be fun like to come back. Biggest flop them. of a signing. Like, like just random things like that. Wait, biggest flop or biggest flop of a signing? Like biggest flop, like. <laughs> I, was, I was like biggest signing that doesn't work out. Things like that, I think. <laughs> would be fun to do. So if you have any ideas for awards or things you want to see us predict or over-unders, anything like that, comment down below. Again, comment some of your predictions too, because we can talk about some of them next episode. But yeah, we're going to be predicting the entire season next episode. Uh, That should hopefully be out like mid next week because the season starts in 11 days. Like we're almost there at this point. So it's creeping up. It is creeping up really fast. I think it's what, like next, not next, but the Tuesday following, I think is Mm -hmm. when the season starts. So we're right there. Uh, but yeah, we appreciate y'all watching. If you made it to the end of the video, um, what's what's something else? I never think of a word or a, something you can drop in the comments. Uh, comment comment a heart to fill in my shirt. Yeah, comment a heart for to fill in Ryan's shirt, uh, whether that's an emoji or it's just the word heart. Comment one of those to help Ryan out there. But yeah, we appreciate y'all as always here from the two-man game. Uh, Connor, Ryan, again, leave a like and subscribe if you're here on YouTube. If you're on the audio platforms, download the episode, um, You know, share it with friends, come over to YouTube, subscribe. We're almost at 300. Again, thank you so much for all the views on the first episode. Or not first episode, last episode with the Damon Drew trades. And the first one, I'm thankful for those too. That's true. Those views were also great. But we appreciate y'all. Take care. Peace.